In my previous video, I brought you the shocking truth that Marcion, who lived in the second century, was denounced by many of the early church fathers as being a heretic. We have Justin Martyr, who said that Marcion operated by the aid of the devils. He also said the devils put forward Marcion. Other church fathers said the serpent was in Marcion. And that Marcion was the firstborn of Satan. So from here on in, I'm calling him the firstborn of Satan. Now I'm going to read from the fourth R, 27-5, September, October, 2014, page 3. Marcion, forgotten church father, an inventor of the New Testament? What? This, this person who operated by the devil? This person who is the firstborn of Satan was the inventor of the New Testament? Mm-hmm. This was written by church historian Jason David Badoon. He said that Marcion, following what he believed to be the views of Paul, he pushed for a clean break with the Jewish religious traditions. Oh, doesn't this sound like the church today? Following who? The firstborn of Satan in breaking clean from the Jewish religious tradition? Hmm. Page four under this firstborn of Satan, it says, the Jewish background of Christian thought and practice was minimized. Oh, why would Satan want to do that? Page five, these Marcionite Christian churches were unique in having something no other Christian community had in the mid-second century, a canon of Christian scriptures. Many modern Christians think of the New Testament as a book outside of history, something that was just suddenly there. Historians of Christianity, though able to trace its gradual authorship and formation, nonetheless typically find themselves describing the composition and collection of New Testament writings as an anonymous process, a spontaneous evolution accomplished by the nameless and faceless members of ancient communities of faith. But when it comes to the origin of the New Testament, we know the name of the individual responsible. Page 6. Marcion's New Testament consisted of two parts. One was the Evangelion, which was only Luke, and the Apostolicon, which was, of course, Paul. We can affirm, therefore, four points Adolf von Harnack made. Number one, Christians owe to Marcion the idea of a New Testament. Number two, Christians owe to Marcion the particular form of the New Testament. The equal standing of the letters of Paul with the memoirs of Christ. Number three, Christians owe to Marcion the prominence of the voice of Paul. Many of Marcion's contemporaries had all but forgotten Paul. Hmm, why would the firstborn of Satan want Paul to be so prominent?